this time we talk about sports vehicles. A Mercedes-Benz with a body and frame design made entirely of aluminum. Obviously, it's a very special kind of aluminum that gives it exceptional characteristics in terms of rigidity as a platform and in terms of its weight. Weight is fundamental in any type of vehicle, especially in sports cars, because with less mass and the same driving force, you get more acceleration. It's as simple as that. The old formula, force equals mass times acceleration. Obviously, the engine is in the front, and what's most interesting is that the transmission is on the rear axle. What connects the transmission to the engine is a drive shaft, and it's a very special drive shaft because it spins at the same revolutions as the engine, which means it's under a lot of stress and requires some very interesting mechanical solutions. Why does this particular setup of having the transmission in the back and the engine in the front exist? Well, uh, it is a bit complicated, but it makes the weight distribution of the car really interesting. In this case, it's 48% on the front axle and 52% on the rear axle. I would say it comes pretty close to perfection. The vehicle will have almost ideal characteristics for accelerating, braking, cornering, and traction under just about any condition. Because of the way it's built, it has an especially low center of gravity. And that also greatly contributes to its ability to overcome obstacles, handle sudden maneuvers, and manage weight transfers, both when braking and accelerating. And if we add to that the features of this super sport, like the wide track and the long wheelbase, which mean the support points of the vehicle are farther apart. And that also greatly contributes to the vehicle's stability under the most demanding conditions, as well as its traction, whether on dry or wet surfaces, both when braking and cornering. In other words, it's optimal even in the most demanding conditions. If we add to this a suspension specifically designed for this type of vehicle, the whole package is magnificent. Notice that, in addition to those demanding maneuvers like being able to turn under extreme conditions, many times you also have to accelerate in extreme situations. And if the suspension doesn't work together with the rest of the body, you're going to lose grip and start to skid and all sorts of things that, in short, can be disastrous in these situations. You know, because you've heard me say it countless times, that I'm a lover of physics. Well, being able to achieve these kinds of performances with these vehicles is nothing more and nothing less than a pure and clear demonstration of physics, of applying physics. But let's talk about something that really excites all of us, the engine. This has a naturally aspirated 6.3 liter V8 unit. And those 6.3 liters produce an output of about 527 horsepower. It's an engine specifically designed for high performance, for top level capabilities. We could point out the exhaust system, which behaves as if it were two individual four cylinder engines and achieves a tuning in the exhaust that sounds like music, very special, which helps a lot. But perhaps one of the most remarkable things, which makes the center of gravity of the entire engine assembly, and consequently the vehicle, as low as possible, is the incorporation of a concept used exclusively in race cars, the dry sump. What is this dry sump? It means that the engine's oil pan is not an oil reservoir. Yes, it does collect the oil that drips down from all the internal lubrication of the engine, but the oil doesn't stay in the oil pan. It's sent to an external reservoir, which also has its own cooling system, and from there it returns to the engine. The lubrication pumps, also to optimize performance, distribute the lubricant as needed and at the required pressure. Let me remind you that relief valves in the oil pump cause unnecessary power loss. Another feature worth mentioning is the dual clutch system, because the gearbox in this vehicle has a kind of double gear mechanism. Gear shifts can happen almost instantly, because the next gear can be engaged beforehand, even if it seems unbelievable that the speed change is actually happening. By changing the clutch actuation, the next gear, whether up or down, can be engaged in fractions of a second. We're talking about hundredths of a second, which makes that typical jolt you feel during a gear change practically undetectable. 
We could easily talk for hours, and believe me, I'd absolutely love to do that, about this fascinating type of vehicle. But the idea here was simply to quickly show you just a few of the features that make these particular units so unique. Subscribe to our channel, Autotech TV. Technology, clear and simple.